Cellulosic ethanol is a biofuel produced from grasses, wood, algae, or other plants. As a biofuel, it serves as an alternative to fossil fuels and are cleaner burning, reducing its environmental impact. While ethanol derived from sugarcane and corn is widely used, it is controversial due to its energy-intensive growth, high fertilizer usage, as well as the fact that it depletes food supply. Cellulose, however, is contained in nearly every natural free-growing plant, tree, and bush in meadows, forests, and fields all over the world without agricultural effort or cost needed to make it grow. First, wood chips are produced from wood. Mostly hardwood is used, however other woods such as biomass shrub willow is also used. Additionally, chips that are deemed unacceptable for paper and other wood products can be used for ethanol. After the harvested wood is chipped, it is separated and washed, where particles such as rocks, bark metal, plastics, and other large contaminants are removed. After processing the wood chips, they are treated with high pressures and steam to break down the various components of the wood cells and separate fibers. This is known as pretreatment. On the wood cells, the cell wall first needs to be broken down. Additionally, the polymer lignin needs to be separated to expose complex carbohydrates cellulose and hemicellulose. Cellulose is the main source of the sugar, glucose, that will be used in the process. After the cell wall and the hemicellulose have been broken down, enzymes such as cellulase and hemicellulase will break the long chains of sugar into individual sugar molecules, such as glucose and xylose. The next step is fermentation, where the sugars are fermented by naturally occurring bacteria to produce acetic acid. Then, during esterification, the resulting acetic acid is combined with an intermediate product and converted to ethyl acetate. During hydrogenation, ethyl acetate is then reacted with hydrogen with a catalyst to make ethanol. The next step is distillation, where ethanol is dehydrated at high temperatures using an acid catalyst to reduce ethylene and water. Lastly, during polymerization, the ethylene molecules are combined to create larger hydrocarbon chains, which are then added to hydrogen to form bio-based fuels such as gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. Environmental Impact and Material Properties On a life cycle basis, ethanol produced from agriculture residues or dedicated cellulosic crops has significantly lower greenhouse gas emissions and a higher sustainability rating than ethanol produced from grain. According to U.S. Department of Energy studies, cellulosic ethanol reduces greenhouse gas emissions by 85% over reformulated gasoline. By contrast, starch ethanol, which usually uses natural gas to provide energy for the process, reduces greenhouse gas emissions by 18-29% to 29 over gasoline only. Greenhouse gas emissions will decrease dramatically as biofuels of the future are increasingly made from cellulosic feedstocks, and as the associated farming, harvesting, transport, and production processes increasingly use clean, renewable energy sources. Cellulosic ethanol improves the energy balance of ethanol because the feedstocks are either waste of another industry or dedicated crops such as switchgrass and miscanthus, which use low fertilizer compared to corn. When biomass is used to power the process of converting non-food-based feedstocks into cellulosic ethanol, the amount of fossil fuel energy used in the production is, redu is reduced even further. Here on this slide, we can see the costs of the greenhouse gas and particular matter. You can see that for corn ethanol, the costs are way higher than the cellulosic ethanol. On the next slide, we can see the energy balance and material properties. Ethanol is a highly flammable alcohol with the chemical formula C2H5OH. The cartilage liquid has a density of 789 kilograms per meter cubed and a low boiling point of around 80 degrees Celsius. Ethanol is primarily used in gasoline blended at 10% ethanol. It is used to oxygenate the fuel and improve combustion in the engine. This reduces particulates in vehicle emissions and air pollution. Some vehicles, called flex fuel vehicles, run on 85% ethanol and some run even on 100% ethanol. While ethanol delivers less energy than gasoline on a gallon for gallon basis, today's vehicles are designed to run on gasoline blended with small amounts of ethanol with no perceptible effect on fuel economy. Economics of cellulose ethanol. In addition to some of the benefits mentioned in the beginning of this video, on a broader scale, cellulose ethanol is a heavily subsidized industry. There's room for innovation as it's a relatively less developed technology, which can come with some of its downsides, which include lack of feasibility due to technical immaturity and cost. Since the US is the world's largest producer of cellulose ethanol, we'll keep our case study based on that region. 
In the 2000s, the U.S. government introduced some legislations that ultimately required oil companies to have renewable fuel sources blended in with their conventional gasoline and diesel products or to face penalties and fines. These legislations were to take place starting in the 2010s. These acts provisioned that ethanol made from starch, sugar, or cellulose be supplied in increasing amounts by the year. The targets for cellulose ethanol were 100 million gallons in 2010, 250 million gallons in 2011, and 500 million gallons in 2012, increasing gradually to upwards of 15 billion gallons per year starting in the early 2020s. At the time these legislations were written, there were no significant producers of cellulose ethanols in the US, but the idea was that the technology was there that the new and very generous incentives would galvanize the production of cellulose ethanol. However, in reality, no significant producer of cellulose ethanol existed until 2012, and even then, that producer, Blue Sugars Corporation, only produced about 20,000 gallons, which was really far from the half billion target set out by the government for that year. Blue Sugars eventually filed for bankruptcy one year later. Since then, Many new startup companies for cellulose ethanol have sprung up, but only a few have survived. Even though the legis legislations set out for 100 million gallons to be produced starting in 2010, the 1 million mark wasn't reached until 2015, with 10 million mark being reached in 2017. Despite all the startup funding from the government, it seems as though many cellulose ethanol companies cannot seem to sustain themselves economically at all on their own. And so, currently, cellulose ethanol does not live up to the type.